Hi, don't you think I'm cute? Lick me and I'll give you a fatal brain disease. <laughs> Hello, my friends. Today, I would like to share some about rat lungworm disease with you. I know, it sounds awful. And it kind of is. We knew this was present when we moved to Hawaii, but we didn't know how much it would affect us. Now, maybe this is just us being paranoid parents, but we will tell you what we've learned and what we've experienced here in Hawaii. Those slugs you saw, well, they're kind of everywhere. They especially come out at night and crawl all over everything. If you leave dishes out or food out, it's probably going to get slugs crawling over it. Now, the real danger is in eating a raw slug. I know they do not look too appetizing, but it's not the big ones that are really the danger. It's the baby slugs. These babies are so small that many, many of them could rest on top of a grain of rice. And each one of them has enough of the nematodes inside of its body, if it's infected, to seriously infect a human being. So, in Wisconsin, we're used to just picking wild greens and eating them. Here, if you pick a wild green and it happens to have one of those little baby slugs on it, you may be in a lot of trouble. I thought you might want to admire me some more. <laughs> Did you know I can have hundreds of babies a year? Ouch, ouch, my eye, stupid eye, stupid eye. With children, this feels even sketchier to us. And that's where it's really gotten difficult. When we moved here, we were very excited about planting vast gardens and having a never ending growing season. But the gardens, they attract a lot of these slugs. Yes, you could cook everything, and that should theoretically kill off the nematodes and you would be safe. For us, that's kind of sad because we often enjoy things like a kale salad raw. In the raw greens, they are just not happening here. It is also said that if you just carefully wash things, you'll be okay. But if you imagine a head of broccoli and where those little guys, those little slugs could hide inside of there, knowing it would only take one mistake, and your child could be in a lot of trouble, it just puts a different slant on gardening than what we experienced back in Wisconsin. Again, maybe we're being paranoid. If you look at the number of cases, oh, don't quote me, but I think there were 12 cases in Hawaii last year. That's what you read on the government website. However, it gets a lot sketchier than that because it's difficult to diagnose and the, the symptoms come in a wide range. You can intake a few of the nematodes and not even have any symptoms at all, or just very, very minor headaches and small symptoms. You can also die from it. Now, if you're living conventionally and buying things from the grocery store that have come from the mainland, you're pretty safe. Interestingly, it's people that are living off the land, doing a lot of foraging, a lot of gardening, who are in the most danger. So compare that the government saying that there were 12 confirmed cases last year and a friend of ours we met on the other side who is a scientist and she is also a gardener and a forager. She did a survey in her neighborhood and she feels that there's evidence that 30% of the people in her neighborhood have been infected with rat lungworm, ranging from people who just had a couple weeks of illness to one gentleman who has lost a lot of his mental and physical functioning because of the disease. It manifests in a meningitis, so a lot of strange pains and tingling, sometimes some paralysis, and can lead to more serious symptoms down the road, and it's almost always pretty long-lasting. If you're lucky, your symptoms are going to abate within one to two weeks, six to eight weeks is more likely of dealing with the pain, the headaches, the paralysis. Don't I have a pretty mouth? I use it to eat things. I like to eat lots of things. Well, my favorite food is poop. What's your favorite food? Well, actually my favorite favorite food is rat poop. See this rat? He's kind of sick. He's got rat lungworm. 
And when he poops, oh, the poop is so good. It's so good. I love it. And that's how I get rat longworm. And then when you eat one of my babies, then yeah, that's how it all works. So we're just extremely careful. We don't leave dishes out overnight when we wash them. And we wash food very, very thoroughly. And we're very careful about buying anything local that is like kale or broccoli that has hiding places in it. This is one of those things where if it was just Rebecca and I, we might feel differently about it. But since we have the responsibility of preparing the food for our children, and if we don't do it right, the effects could be very, very bad. It puts a different slant and a different burden on food preparation and food gathering. Rat lungworm is not native to Hawaii. It's one of those things that's been brought in. In fact, that's been eye-opening that in Hawaii, pineapples are not native. Mangoes are not native. Or many of the fruits that we think of as Hawaiian are imports. And because these islands are way out in the Pacific, there are very few plants and animals that, that are native that are left here. There's some things that floated in, were brought in by birds, and evolved here on the islands, but most things were brought in at some point through a long history of humans coming to these islands. Rat lungworm, unfortunately, is one of those things. This has been a reminder for us that wherever you go, there are things that will get you. And it's no different here in Hawaii. You often hear people saying Hawaii is a paradise. And in some ways that's true in the sense that there's not a lot here that's gonna get you. No venomous snakes and the sharks are pretty friendly. But rat lungworm, especially for those trying to live off the land a little bit more, is definitely an issue. So it would be fun to hear in the comments what the dangers are in your area and how you deal with them. It might be crime, it might be the water, it might be grizzlies. What is it that you have to be aware of in your area? And what are the best defenses against that? It's interesting to remember that we humans have populated every corner of the globe. We are supremely adaptable. So in your corner of the globe, how have you had to adapt in order to make it safe, fun, and to thrive there? Sorry for the jumpy edits, my friends. There were a lot of cars going by, so I just stopped talking whenever one came by. And that's the reason for all those cuts. Love to you all. Can't wait to hear from you in the comments. Well, we slugs, we're supremely adaptable too. We live like all over the place. And how do we deal with, well, I guess our biggest problem is humans. They're really gross and they kill us all the time and sprinkle salt on us and put stuff around to kill us and we don't like them so that's why we get rat lung disease <laughs>